Hi, welcome back to the Scribe Studio. I'm Mark Walker. I'm here with Nate Keefe. Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty good. All right. Thanks for coming in again, Nate. Yep. Uh, in this video, Nate's going to be teaching us about net change patterns and one particular one as an example. Yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about what net change is and how you can find that out in Scribe Online. Right. That's so. a great place to start. So net change might be not so, a familiar term to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about what that is so, first. You know, net change or the delta is really okay. what records have changed, the data values in their fields have yep. changed since the last time you looked or scribes looked. Right. And why are net why is net change an important thing to consider in your integration design? Yeah, so it's gonna make your jobs much faster and they're gonna be more efficient when you're only processing the data that you have to. Right. You're not processing everything every time, just the stuff that's changed. Right. The, like you said, the delta. Yeah. Okay. And so there's a couple different ways that you can find net change. Right. You know, so you can have an application hook or message to send a scribe when your data has changed. That's kind of an event-based way of yeah. doing it, right? You could have a field that you know it's flagged or it's triggered to to be a certain value. You know, right. needs integration yep. equals true. You could do snapshots, but I want to talk to you today about a last modified date timestamp. Okay, something that a lot of systems have built into them. Yeah. So so a lot of systems, you know, whatever they are, CRM or ERP systems, they'll have a date time field. You know, it could be modified on, created on. Mm -hmm. And those are going to get increased. They're going to get stamped up every time a user or workflow or, or an integration changes them. Right. And that's a really important part of this pattern is that the system is maintaining that last modified yeah. field for you. So you don't have to worry about it yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So in Scribe, we have this kind of you know, out-of-the-box feature to help you look at these fields over here in, you know, in CRM and Salesforce. They okay. tell you the last time that they've been modified. Right. So in Scribe, we look at this field and we kind of we, we pick it as what I call our high watermark. Value. Okay. Yep. Um, so this out of the box feature, you choose the field. Uh, it's not specific to last modified, created on. It could be any date time, but those are the two that I want to kind of show you about today. So as the designer, you have to pick which of the modified fields you. Yep. want to use because there could be multiple in a system. She's going to use the right one. Yeah. And you mentioned something called a high watermark. I know that's a kind of a scribe terminology we use. Can we talk about that just, just for a minute? Absolutely. So you're going to be choosing one date time field per map. Okay. And what's happening with that is we're going out to this database or this applications mm -hmm. API and we're going out to, you know, like, let's say accounts, for example. I want to go to this table or object I'm going to go out and I'm going to query the data from it and say, right. what are the accounts that have a last modified date greater than, and that's my high watermark. So my okay. maps are going to keep track of the data that they're processing yep. so that I'm just getting the new data. So another way to think about this high watermark, if you think this is fair, is um, of all the rows that I just processed in my last run of this map, uh, the row that had the latest date in that modified on field. Right. The one with the highest date or the latest date is what we call that high water mark. Yeah. Okay. So let me show you just real quickly how that kind of concept started here. Okay. When I'm building out my Scribe Online IS mapping, yep. I have my blocks in here. And so when I go to this query to this account, have my account entity, and I'm able to choose this radio button, I'm going to turn it on. So it says the top choice is process all records on each run. Yep which is not what we want to do. Nope. Right? We want to be efficient, so we're going to process the records that have been created or updated yeah. since the last time I ran. And okay. now Scribe's going to let you choose from any of your date time fields on that entity so it's, what you want to use. So it's, excuse me, could you bring up that pop that drop down list again? So this is a filtered list of the fields that are inside of that. Yep. Just showing you the, the table the that we're times. connected to. So yeah. just the ones that are date time, but you have to pick the right one. Right. Mhm. Mm so in this example, you know, I'm using last modified date. Okay. And that's going to be how I'm choosing to, to do that high mm -hmm. watermark. Yep. So how it's going to work, you already kind of talked about it a little bit. Yep. On the first run of this execution, you saw that it was set to never. I've never run the map. Okay. So it's going to use that, you know, a low date, a minimum date for that database or application. It's going to get all the accounts with a value greater than that. Right. It's going to order the data so I have the oldest accounts first based upon when they were modified on to the newest ones. So do you have to do anything in your Scribe Online block configuration to tell it to sort that source data? Nope, it's going to do it right off the bat. So okay. behind the scenes, it's going to order that data. Okay. And so every record that you process successfully, Scribe's going to remember that value. So you're building up that high watermark okay. as your maps are running. Okay. So, so if the map ever stops. Yeah. 
So it could stop because you lost your connection. It could stop because you you know had too many row errors. It's going to know the last successful record that it processed. Okay. Um, and so it's going to remember that from map to map. So the next time that I run, the next map's going to pick up where your previous map left off. So let's kind of show you some sample data here. Okay. I have four counts, and these are the, this is the data that I want to process. So I've chosen that last modified date. That's my high watermark. And Scribe's going to go out. It's going to order that data ascendingly. So mm -hmm. it's the oldest to the newest. Now when I go out, I'm going to process each row one by one. So it's going to happen. Scribe, Microsoft, those are going to be successful. I'm going to have a row error here on Oracle, and then SAP is going to be successful. So, so for whatever reason, that third row in this result set failed. Right. OK. So what we need to know is that when this map runs first off from map to map, mm -hmm. the first time it ran, I used that last modified date field. Right. It's basically like saying where the accounts have a greater value than you know 1,900. Right. Now kind of that's like the, an uninitialized value because yeah, you've yeah. never run the map before. So you're going to get all the all yeah. the accounts. So the next time it's going to run, it's going to save that date time, the last one that it processed from no, row number four. Yeah. It's going to get all the accounts greater than that. Even though row number three failed, yep. it gets the date from row number four. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that could be no accounts. It could be ones that have been processed after okay. that. So it's not when Scribe ran it. It's the highest value of, those, of that data. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a bit off. Uh, Maybe what you were thinking about, but I was wondering. Some, it begs the question: What what would somebody do to go back and process that third row? There's, I yeah. think of two options. One, they could maybe should let you answer the question. <laughs> but one, they could go back into the source system yeah. and they could modify the data using the source user interface, yeah. right? Or two, there's a rejected row feature where we right. could store those rejected. Is yeah. there another one that I didn't think of? So there's three. So the first off, like you said, I could reprocess that failed row. So that yep. third row. Scribe is going to keep the data so I can make changes to my mapping okay. if I need to. I can reprocess it. The second time, uh, the second way around is I could go to that application and I can just make a change to right. it. Probably yeah, the simplest way to do it. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing you could do is you can actually change that high watermark, what Scribe is remembering. Uh, so so you, you can go back into that block configuration and edit that date. Yeah, so this map, I've already run it. Mm -hmm. This is my high watermark value in here. Okay. I can go in and, and just change this data. So if I know, well, you know, this didn't all work, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to the first or, okay. or maybe a month or so back. So now when I save this map, it compiles it down, sends it to that agent. Yep. So then this is the new high watermark Got value. It. Okay. So that high watermark acts like a, a filter on the source. Yeah. But you're not setting it up in the filters part of Scribe Online in your block configuration. Mm -hmm. It's just this feature you're showing us right here on the screen. Exactly. I think that's an important distinction to know because it acts kind of like a filter, but it's sort of automatically right. built into <laughs> your map. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so when you're choosing those date time stamps, yep. you know, I have five or six there. I need to know what one I'm using because I need to know how my map's going to mm -hmm. react to that. So most commonly, you use that modified on last modified by date field because okay. that's every time you've changed that value. Mm -hmm. So when you're building out your map, you know this could be a brand new record or it could be an update to a record. Right. You need to know that. Mm -hmm. So the other one that I use sometimes is a created on date. So I know that in my applications, there's only going to be one created on date. The right. first time it was created. Right. And then when the records change after that, it doesn't change that yeah. created on date again. Yeah. So what yeah. I do when I build out maps sometimes is I'll have a map that goes out and it does that query and I do it based upon that created on date. Haven't run it yet, but so I'm only going to get all these contacts here that we're looking at once. And so I can go out and I can kind of do just a blind create here. I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about duplicates. I could put this down into you know key cross referencing or, or just right. for speed sake, just do a batch create. Got it. So because you're counting on the source system and that created date to be maintained yeah. exactly <laughs> as yeah. it you expect it to be, right? right? Yeah. So that's you want to choose the right date. There's different mm -hmm. date times out there. You'll know how to use it based upon how you understand that date time yeah. value to change. Um, so the other thing I want to talk to you about is kind of comes apart with when you're using the high watermark. So if you're doing bi-directional integrations, right. I'm getting accounts from my CRM and going into my customers and my ERP, right. and then vice versa, mm -hmm. well, Scribe's going to be going out and it's going to be touching all those records, increasing that date time value. Right. So I built be these to be efficient. 
Right. But now my scribe is going to increase that date time. So when the map runs, it goes through whatever interface method we're using. In this case, if it's dynamic CRM or Salesforce or something else, we're going through their API, yeah. let's say. And any changes that scribe online makes to the target system are going to change that modified yeah. date. So those records will be eligible to be picked up by some later yeah. run of another map. Exactly. And the data could just wind up going back to the other side, and then it goes back and forth yeah, forever. Bounce okay. backs. So that's so, what this ignore user is all about. Yeah, so what, well, what you want to do is you want to say, all right, when I'm going into that CRM system mm -hmm. or the Salesforce system, I'm going to log in as a certain user. It's how I created my connection. So I know right. that I'm coming in as, as Nate Keefe. Okay. So when I'm going through this, in my mappings, I have accounts. I'm going by the modified on field. Yep. But I'm going to filter out those that have been modified by me. So I okay. have this Nate Heath user who I'm connected with. To You're really guy. using that as the user to authenticate for the purposes of integration. Right. That's not a user that you're using when you're, I'm using using too much in a <laughs> sentence, but when you're logging into the system and using the yeah. user interface, you're not logging as Nate Keefe. That's just right. reserved for your kind of background integration processing. Exactly. Okay. So you can call it integration. Right. And now I know in the UI, this is the integration that changed it. And yep. I can also weed out those changes by adding another So pick up right everything there. that's greater than the high water mark, except those that were changed by my integration. Yep. Exactly. And that's how you can stop that echoing of data or bouncing back of data to go right. on forever. Yeah. Yep. So that's a good concept to understand as yep. well. So there's a couple other things that you know we need to know about when we're finishing up. Sure. Here. Um, so if you don't have that date time stamp, if you're not using an application that has it, right. you're going to the database. You might want to go out and create that. Mm -hmm. So that could be done. You just do a database trigger on it whenever somebody's created or updated those fields, right? And you can use that. Mm -hmm. Now the other important thing to know is that you want to have both the date and the time. Right. So when you look at real data, you could be importing via Scribe and you know a couple records in the same second. Right. So it's those milliseconds that are actually going to help you out to understand which one comes next. So the precision of that date time uh, make a difference yeah. in the integration. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the other thing too is if you're working with you know orders and order line items, Scribe will let you join in those line items. Right. So you want to make sure that your application, if you add a new line item or you delete one, you want that order header to have an updated date time stamp. Right. So then when you, you have your jobs out there, they go and reconcile those changes, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that those come in. Okay. We talked about the ignore user. Yep. You want to make sure if you're doing bi-directional integration with the same table or entity, you have that ignore user to prevent the bounce back. Okay. And then lastly, one of the kind of the cons of using this is because it's query based for data that's changed, it's not going to track those deletes. So you might want to have another process out there that goes out and finds, you know, all the records and then kind of matches it up yep. with what's changed. Very good. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to share about this <laughs> pattern? That's about it. Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot for preparing the information. We hope you all find this uh, helpful and we appreciate your time in checking out our videos and that you come back another time to learn more from our Scribe experts. Mm -hmm.